Hello, folks, and welcome to the Friend or Foe series. Uh, my name is Sharogan. I am your friendly neighborhood shoutcaster, and joining me today is Torres. Hello, hello. I'm trying to get right into this game between SGR and Team O Deer, but at first, we got to hit up the draft. Absolutely. You know, I'm really excited for this. We got the third seed versus the second seed, and I think this graphic is super clean. Uh, really nice that we actually got were able to come up with something quite as quickly after the uh, the draft tool changes. Uh, but right off the bat, we've got the Vladimir pick and the Seraphine pick as well for the bands. I'm liking both of those. It's getting rid of some really powerful AP champs. Yeah, definitely getting rid of some really powerful AP champs. Seraphine, just overall really annoying on the side of OD. I mean, we've seen people play around it all season long ever since the release. It's always been strong as a utility character. Even damage at some point. This is a consistent damage you can output with the cooldown reduction. And Vladimir is always no fun to lane against. Absolutely, and then right away taking away photographs, Draven, good choice because he did get a little bit of a buff uh, in the patch that we're currently playing on because he got, I think it was like a a 40 AD or 10 AD boost, something like that, uh, to his early game. Something of that nature, can't remember off the top of my head. And then we got the Victor ban right as well, par targeting uh, Street Smurfs. Uh, Victor, we've seen him do some pretty good work on that. Uh, basically, the way I'm expecting this whole game to play out is I'm kind of expecting uh, Odir to kind of go for more of that, you think, in late game, or, or are they going to go for that early game cheese? Mm, I think SGR is more of a, a late game team, from what I've seen. At least where the points were, uh, it depends if Street Smurf is popping off or not. I feel like a lot of the game is heavily dictated on whether or not Street Smurf is doing well. And I feel like that can also be like one of their falling out points, whereas Team Odir can uh, kind of just target. Mm. And in this top lane, this top lane matchup, I'm really liking like the uh, the Apate Django matchup. Uh, we've seen Apate do really, really well uh, on some of those uh, more tanky uh, top laners and whatnot. But Django just popped off a couple of games ago, and it was really intense. And Soxmas versus Demon Lord Nano is going to be another one of those matchups. I think we really got to keep an eye on, um, just because Sox is so good at going into the enemy jungle and kind of trying to make it make it his own, just a, a little bit farther away from home. Yeah, I mean, blow for blow, I think all the like all. Each is, each opponent's just counterpart is just really strong uh, together. I mean, we see them as the third and second seed, but individually as players, I feel like they can go both and both for each other. And if one team gets the edge we'll, in uh, in these individual matchups, we'll probably see the scale tip over. More than likely. And right off the bat, we have that uh, Lee Sin pick, which is r a really good flex pick. Same thing with the Diana. Um because we have seen Lee Sin go top a lot lately, so there's a good chance that it could be going over to Django, but it could also be flexed into jungle. Uh, so that's kind of one of those will it, will it, won't they uh, sort of pick right there. Yeah, kind of daring to be different. We'll see where that Diana ends up going. Also, mm -hmm. the Lee Sin going in. A little bit of Soximus, a trademark pick for him. We're playing against that. One of his better champions. Something I want to bring up with the graphic is the KDAs. You can see Soxmas's KDA is actually super high in comparison to everybody else. But due to this being uh, with the graph being so different with the KDAs, I do want to bring the attention that each player plays a different role, and the KDAs don't indicate skill level. Uh, absolutely, that is something to keep in mind. And uh, those KDAs can also be representative of just the fact of number of games played, and not necessarily how impactful those fights were. Um, it, it is always kind of scary, though, to see your opponent has an 8.1 KDA while you've only got a, a 3.7. It's like, uh, uh what, what what do I do against that? It's a little bit of a psych out tool. A little bit of a psych out, cool. I mean, psychological warfare at the beginning of the game. You'll see. Everybody mm -hmm. can see the sheets. <laughs> that is true. And we have another flex pit with the set. Um, more than likely, that's going to be going uh, bot lane, but... Or, eh. Definitely, I mean, definitely flex pit. I'm, I'm trying. I was like, you could go bot lane for support because you do have a Tristana who's going to want to jump in, so it's a good counter to that. Uh, but at the same time, against a Lee Sin, it's probably a pretty good pick against another duelist. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about flex books, and at this point in the game, season eleven, you always need one player that can play these two, one or two players that can just kind of throw your enemies for a loop, especially in a league like this where you're playing double round robin. You always need to be able to keep your enemy on their toes. That you definitely do. And so right off the bat, we have uh, the Nautilus band coming out as well. So it kind of feels like they don't expect the set to be the support pick uh, with that Nautilus band. And then Silas, uh, talking about that Silas pickup real quickly, there's a lot of really good ultimates for him to choose from already uh, on the side of SGR. So I feel like showing it here is not the worst choice in the world, but usually you want to hold on to that just to kind of see exactly what you're going to be getting. 
than that it is. It looks like Jax is actually banned out from SGR. Yeah, banning Jax uh, makes me think that it's probably going to be a set top, because I know that that can always be a really frustrating thing whenever you go in a set and you're trying to get your your four-hit combo off with punching him in the face, and Jax is just like, mm, no counter-strike. Yeah, I mean, of course, we've also seen Django's Jax tear it up earlier on in the season, but as we were talking about that, Thresh is actually picked up, and the bottom lane looks walked in for OD. Yeah, so Thresh just on a bot lane. That is going to be a really strong... Uh, heavy engage bot lane. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out because I think Photograph and Antunes, uh, we've seen Antunes hit some really nasty hooks that just make absolutely no sense. How is he hitting them kind of a thing. Um, with the Morgana pickup, more than likely that is going to be a Morgana support. Uh, we're not, because uh, unfortunately Morgana jungle was kind of shut down. There is uh, a lot of squish, I think, on the side of SGR. It's not a very tanky team. Uh, so that's going to be... Re and then we have the Yasuo pickup to just keep that trend going. So that is a very powerful team on the side of SGR, but that is not going to be something you want to see necessarily uh, scaling into long fights. You want those fights to start up very quickly and end very fast uh, by completely obliterating your opponent. And unfortunately for SGR, I feel like OOD's got a team that can sustain those fights long enough to really come out on top. And with the Kale pickup, ooh, that's an interesting one. I would want Orthodox from the side of OOD, but I mean, overall, I mean, could be a big major threat to the late game sense of to SGR, keeping your allies alive. Maybe that Tristana, that Silas with that ultimate, maybe keeping yourself alive and just doing the DPS from far away. I, I completely agree. I think that's exactly what they're going for. They're basically like, okay, our win condition early game is going to be uh, Tristana. And then once we start to get to that mid late game, it's going to be Silas and Kale. Once Kale comes online at level 16, becomes like three champions. Uh, it's going to be pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, uh, based on this draft, I'm kind of leaning in the direction of OOD. I think they've got it. I really like what they've picked out. Uh, what about you, Torres? I like what both teams picked out. I like the OOD's late game scaling comp, but I don't think it's going to be able to survive the early game pressure from SGR. I really feel like if Morgana, if Frozen is able to roam around with that Morgana and kind of neutralize the Thresh roams, maybe the Thresh engages in the 2v2 on the bot side, maybe make some roams into the top or mid, I feel like this game will get stomped up from the side of SGR onto OD. All right, well, with that, I guess only one way to find out, so let's hop onto the Rift. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. You see the uh, the classic uh, five people stack with the Morgana, hoping to find an early bind onto someone, probably with the five points start. Yep. They're definitely looking for that early bind, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, Big Twig has not stepped up into that river, but he's going to be seeing it come right here. Far enough away that he can just walk away, <laughs> and they got spotted out, given the sad face. Yeah, some lucky timing. I mean, if you're frozen, you 100% go for that Morgana binding. Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right, and then we got uh, kind of a looks like they might be trying to catch them as they come back into the river over here. So I'm expecting this game to be a relatively quiet one first couple of levels. Uh, but once they hit level four and level three, I think those are going to be when we start seeing some craziness. Yeah, probably some level three. We'll have to see where Soxmas takes his pathing. He's always been good about playing aggressive and playing into your opponent's face, putting the pressure on, kind of focusing mistakes. And we'll see how Demon Lord kind of responds to that with his pathing. Considering he's playing Diana jungle, we'll see if he opts into kind of trying to match in 2v2 situations. Because I, I do, I from my understanding, Lee Sin does beat Diana in the one v one until about level six, even probably after, unless they ha she has some significant exp or gold lead. But I mean, let's see if Demon Lord kind of choose to aggress and kind of retaliate against maybe some counter ganks against Soximus. Yep, and Ipate right now getting a lot of damage onto Django, keeping him away from that minion wave, which is what you've got to do to a Kale early game because that is unfortunately like half a champion uh, until it hits level eleven. <laughs> Yeah, basically half a champion. I mean, Hapata is doing good by uh, trading her in the early game, kind of mitigating that as the KO is opted. Django has actually opted into not taking a uh, the Corrupting Potion, more of a Doran Shield. I mean, it's kind of a trade-off for health and like trying to save the HP. Probably hope knowing he's going to get poked down a little bit early was a good start when the shield, but we'll see how that pans out into the later stages as he doesn't have much sustain. Yep, that was a nice hook thrown by Antunes. Lucky he didn't hit. He would have been stuck under tower, taking a lot of damage at a level two. Uh, Big Twig taking a lot of damage by Street Smurf as well. Uh, this mid lane, okay. 
Here's the thing about resourceless champions that I always find really interesting against mana champions is they, by their very nature, have a lot more sustain and they're able to stay in lane a lot longer. Look at that damage onto Antunes just from one binding. Yeah, I mean, you could see what OD's bot lane kind of wanted from the beginning. They've got the level 2 push, the hook barely misses, and I mean, from then on, once the Morgana has the shield, we'll like Ooh, you got a God. spicy fight going on right here. Hipate is going right for that early game kill, but that's going to be a first blood over to Kale as he doesn't quite get it. Yeah, I mean, a little overzealous from Hapate. I mean, let's take a look at our Adobe Creative Cloud replay. We see Hapate level 3. Django still at the level 1. Thinks he can take the fight. An unfortunate level up happens. Lands the Fist Breaker. Just barely misses the Haymaker outside of the, the true damage. That probably would have let him down for a 1-on-1. -on -one, but, I mean, Hapate opts not to use the Flash to maybe go for it. And, I mean, pays for his life. Yeah, that right there is actually one of the things. As Kale, you're like, you gotta if you can play those and you can get uh, fights like that, you know that you're just waiting till level six at that point. It's like, oh, next time you try that, I won't even need to worry because I've already got my ult. Yeah, I mean, an unfortunate situation. I mean, the level up was just there. I think Apate saw the level one, just saw blood in the water, and I went for Django. And it was just really unfortunate. By that point, he just has to commit. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, so. Uh, so what I was getting into is I was going to say that uh, Big Twig versus Street Smurf. Uh, Street Smurf opted to take the Ignite instead of the Teleport, uh, and I think that that's entirely due to the fact that he's resourceless uh, Yasuo into a mana-hungry Big Twig. And so that's going to allow him a lot early game. Look at this! A nice engage by Soxmas, jumping right onto Epate, managing to jump back onto Django to keep him from taking any more damage. There is the Haymaker coming out as well. Lots of damage. True damage doesn't quite make it. Epate getting himself a kill as he's able to pick that up. And that is going to be a double kill over to Epate as he chases Django down. We got a late TP coming in as well out of Big Tweak. He's going to be looking for this kill. He's going to be able to get on him, getting him with that Throne Breaker and going to pick up that revenge as he's able to kind of make up for the misplays that occurred in top lane. Well, but we got a fight going on in bot lane as well. Exactly, Torres. Look at this. Just a lot of spice all across the map. I mean, Antunes is hungry for this. Warpack has effectively gone down a lane, but he's hunting. Demon Lord Nanoid does jump out there, Ro, and he is able to quite pick it up. Antunes trying to survive, doesn't quite make it as Warplak is able to get an auto attack off to kick him down. And so that is going to basically be a uh, three for one across the entire map. I mean, Soximus is trying his best to match this presser. He goes for the top gank, ends up failing. Kind of a mechanical misplay. Oh, oh. that ward hop! Look at that! Oh, man! That was so clean! It's clean, but it amounts to nothing. I, you could feel Soximus just curling his toes after that one. He wanted Frozen. Yeah, he wanted to go in on it so bad, but he just wasn't quite able to get it. Oh my goodness. You can see there would have been a big twig stayed in lane to farm a couple waves. They kind of just did a lane swap. Due to the yeah, push, and you know, you honestly, Kale and, uh, Kale and Silas are both really good at uh, being able to do that. They can both go mid or top lane just based off their very na uh, nature of his champions. That is a big oh, twig oh, throwing oh. out the uh, Throne Breaker. Doesn't actually manage to make a hit. Epate getting off the double punch. He does get a stun, and he does get the Haymaker. And so that's going to be Django having to flash away, trying to survive this. Epate does have ult, so he could have theoretically jumped on that, but that would have taken him under tower. Uh, so it's a smart move that he did not. Yeah, I mean, Hapate, from that unfortunate dive, has turned it around, pulled some magic out of his hat, is now sitting at 3-2, and two, looking to dive Django at this point. He is definitely looking for that dive. He does manage to get the stun, he does manage to get the showstopper out, and he does get the haymaker to connect. Man, Hapate is really angry about that first dive. Brings it up on the second. I mean, he's leagues ahead of Django now. Absolutely. Four kills up on the one kill. Uh, and only two deaths. That is that is not a situation you want to be in as Kale whenever you see that set because that's just going to make your laning phase even more impossible when it was already hard to begin with. Yeah, not what you want from your early game, Kale. You get that first blood, nice and easy, kind of gifted to you, but then a little bit of a misplay, kind of greedy with your health bars and the ganks, and I mean, it gets turned right on your head. Yep, and Django trying to walk back to lane, but they were able to spot out Demon Lord Nanoi, so they know that he's there. Uh, and they know that basically just by jumping in. Look at this. We got a 2v2 fight going on here in the top lane. Soximus is only level 5. Well, Apate is level 7. That is going to be a Apate getting yet another kill as he takes down uh, Soximus. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess they had assumed one of them had backed and was looking for a 2v1, even though that Soximus was level 5. Well, I mean, both Django and Soximus were level 5, but I mean, in the end, walk into the bush, and now Django's in another unfortunate situation where he's getting corralled. Django is going to get... Power. He's going to get dived so hard here. Uh, that was 
uh, oh. Demon Lord Nanoi proxying the wave, able to get him out. Uh, the Showstopper is not up yet, but it is about three quarters of the way there. So there's only another like 10 or 20 seconds. Demon Lord Nanoi looking for that engage, looking for that Q. He does manage to get it. Uh, Showstopper, Heatmaker does not come out though. Yeah, I mean, it was a, I think that was a dive angle from my point of view. You could see Demon Lord kind of took out an up, obscure pathing. He walked back around, kind of scared someone was walking out. You could see both all the players from OOD on the map, though, at that mm -hmm. time. So I'm kind of wondering what they're thinking. But in the end, I nice mean, no hook over. by Antunes, but it's completely negated by that black shield. Yeah, we're seeing the the Morgana pick into fruition right now. Yep. Uh, you know, there's, so there's actually this really interesting interaction I saw with uh, Diana not too long ago. Uh, basically, if you throw out your Q and flash sideways, so you just basically flash in a horizontal angle relative to your Q, you will actually extend its range. And it's range. I mean, Django's just, as you're talking about that, Django is praying for it to his he, lord. He's just, he wants to just get a little bit of farm. What's actually really funny, though, is he has more CS than Set does. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> he can't get to the waves, but he has less CS. He has more CS. So you say CS diff in the chat while the enemy top player is running <laughs> you down five times over. Exactly, exactly. Hail for 16. Yeah, no, and I only bring up that Diana thing because uh, uh, Demon Lord Nano didn't have flash up, and that's what you need in order to pull that off. I couldn't, he was able to connect the cube, but that's just something you can use as Diana if you're aware of it to extend your range. Um, it's a really interesting interaction in the shaming. Look at that damage that's just coming out from Epate. He's able to get so much onto Django without any assistance from minions. Yeah, I mean, Epate just really doesn't care. Demon Lord found himself in the bush. This is absolutely going in the opposite direction. That Look at that nice ult coming out from uh, Django as he it does manage to pick himself up a kill. Epate is trying to chase down the revenge strike at this point as Soximus waits for his energy to come up so he's able to jump over the wall to Krugs. Uh, he is able to get away. Epate is probably looking for yet another dive though because this tower has no health whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd assume Hipate is trying to keep that tower alive as long as he can. But looks like Soximus is getting in on the top side. Yep, and that is exactly what happened. <laughs> So let's see how this goes. Soximus goes under tower. He's like, you know what? I think I'm safe right here. I'm just going to get rid of this wave. I'm going to look for a bat. There's no way this guy... Oh, wait. He went in on the engage and got pulled in by the face breaker. Oh, that's just nasty as the showstopper comes out as well. Pulling him out of range of turret. Oh, this is the main man on the field right now. Yeah, I mean, all eyes on Papate to carry this game. The set is godlike at this moment. I mean... Oh, you know, see how this plays out once he's uh once he moves he pans out to the mid and bot side of the map on these dragon fights. Exactly. Like this the boss is in the play right now. Like he he is on the field. He is in the pit just getting as much fight as he wants. He could probably take down Django right now, but he's like, "You know what? I'll I'll let you farm up, become a bigger threat so I can actually have a fight worth having." Yeah, it's actually really good that he's letting uh, Django kind of push the lane back. It's that tower still has a plate on, but he doesn't want to leave the Ooh, top Hook moment. comes out from Antunes, but doesn't find a connection. We do have the bomb jumping out to Demon Lord Nanoi. Uh, not quite able to make a connection, turn that into a play. They're probably just trying to get this pressure off, though, so they can try and make a play around this Drake. Yeah, Drake is spawning in 10 seconds. He's going to start that Drake stacking win condition play for late game from OOD that we also know from the drop phase. You see Django, but the re what I was talking about before is on the top side of the map. The reason Hipate didn't go for that is that if he killed Django, the wave would have crashed onto the tower, would have created a double wave, gotten the tower, and the kill would have had a essentially a free farm wave. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, that was a, a pretty smart play then on the boss man. On the boss man. <laughs> Otherwise, he, uh, he was giving some... Uh, he was just letting him go just because, yeah, some pity. <laughs> Some pity gold, like, I, I see you. I won't let you know that I see you, but I see you. <laughs> Throw some coins on the ground, peasant. Y'all. All right, look at this. Ibate's just going to let minions finish off that turret, get himself the gold. Django hiding in that bush because he's like, he knows that if he steps up, he's just going to get himself absolutely curb stomped. Uh, we do have a situation where Set is just taking Krugs right now, but he sees Django, goes straight for it, pulls in the face, uh, smashes the face, and Showstopper comes out, pulling him away from the safety of the tower. Django does not get his ult out because it is not up yet, and that is going to be yet another kill to this set. Yeah, I mean, Jango's ult's not up, and Hapate's just knuckling down right on him. Yep, we have Soximus jumping right in on Hapate. He does manage to knock him back under turret. That is going to be Hapate getting out the Haymaker. The shield is going to go up, but it's not going to be enough as that turret shot finally takes him down, and that is going to be 500 gold shut down over to Lee Sin. Yeah, I mean, 
Oh, and this fight is still time. continuing. Photograph. That black shield is not going to protect you from AD damage. Morgana, she has to go golden to stay alive. The ult did come out, but Photograph does just walk away. Big Twig takes the kill, taking Frozen down. Django going in on Street Smurf as well as they're looking for this dive on this tower. The ult on Kale is up right now. Tank some turret shot, taking a turret shot on Antunes. They are going to back off. Let Yasuo back under that turret as they're waiting for the wave to push up. Yeah, I mean... OD does end up getting something back. I mean, catches Frozen, gets both of his summoner spells, but do lose the dragon and does and the top side of the map. I mean, the Lee Sin Soxmas does pick up that shutdown gold, but it's probably not what you want. Ooh, nice hook by Antunes. They are able to pull that Yasuo in. Nowhere for him to go. Nice dodge by Big Twig as well, using the Lantern in order to escape the uh, Morgana binding. They are not going to get taken down there, more, but we do have the Diana Q coming out. Flash from Antunes, though, keeps it from turning into a kill. And that is going to be a snipe as well coming out from Kaiza, but it's not going to really amount to much. We do have Photograph in the bot lane pushing that final turret out, trying to get themselves something to get on this board. Yeah, trying to find something, trying to get these tower plates, trying to get the gold on their carries, get their mythics items as fast as they can, maybe go for a fight. I mean, on the other side, like OOD, I mean, we've seen Hapate just rock everybody's world on the top side of the map, but Big Twig is actually 3 and 1 himself, slowly catching up to a, getting a lead. He, he is slowly catching up to getting a leak. And he, here's the thing. Set is very powerful. Don't get me wrong. Super strong. Has a lot to work with. But the side of OOD, the longer this game goes on, the longer they have, the more time they have to build their items, get Kale up to level 16. It's kind of like a, uh, a castle win, where once he gets to level 16, he just wins games. Same thing with Kale. She'll be an absolute monster uh, come this mid to late game. Yeah, we'll have to see how these late game team fights play out. I'm a I'm wondering how Jenga's positioning is going to be. I mean, we all know the level 16 Kale win condition, the 16 cast and win condition, but it all it really comes down to the player and his positioning. I mean, if the Kale goes down without doing any DPS or just not putting down his ultimate, it's essentially nothing. That is very, very true. Although I do think that with Big Twig getting as big as he is, that's going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, Warplak taking out that war bot side, just trying to get rid of uh, any vision that OOD has. OOD's just got to play it safe, I think. Just uh, turtle back. Wait for, like, just be like, it's okay, guys. We scale. We got this. Yeah, it was good they picked up that first dragon, despite SGR picking up the second one. I mean, it stops the soul wind condition for an extra five minutes. But, I mean, we'll see how what they decide to give in these Drake fights and how long they can prolong these. That is Soximus dodging a binding, but not able to dodge the tornado. He's, he's got the fancy feet going, though. He's got the fancy feet going. He doesn't, he doesn't mind too much, as long as that Yasuo doesn't press the R button. Oh, and Big Twig knows. I feel like he knows that uh, Epate is just waiting in that bush. Doesn't have vision on him, but he's like, I know you're in there. I know you're waiting for me to make a mistake. I am not going to do anything. I'm going to let you waste your time. See? See? Goes in. Big Twig does get a lot of damage off. That is a showstopper to pull him under the turret. Haymaker coming out. That is a lot of damage. Showstopper under the turret to get the kill, and he's just going to walk away. Yeah, I mean... As, as well as Big Twig is faring in his own lane. I mean, the two-level difference is too much. Oh, but we have Soxmas to come and get the revenge. He gets the kick under tower, but Abate didn't get aggroed. Seeing Deja Vu, we'll see Soxmas make this play. He's going to run for the Nexus tower? Or the Inhib tower? I mean, he's just buying his Kale and time in the bot side of the map, just getting <laughs> stacking up that gold as much as they can. Uh, oh. oh, he got an Execute. I am actually really shocked that the timer ran out on that. <laughs> Oh, we'll cut the tape. Soxmas is angry. <laughs> it's yeah, right. I, no, you're exactly right. I'd be totally exactly. I knew that the, the timer was getting though. close. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look at that. We have the nice root coming out from the Everfrost, but that's going to be a Yasuo Tornado to basically negate as he goes in and gets a lot of damage off. Street Smurf getting hit hard. That is an Ignite out, and that is Django picking up the kill as Big Twig kind of seems to give it over to him. He goes in on the back lane, takes out the Kaiser, just ripping him to shreds with that Throne Breaker and the passive. That is a lot of damage, and Soximus also took out Morgana, frozen in the back line. Missed mining, but a hit Q. Soximus doing work. Look at that uh, martial artist go, getting a lot of hits in. They're trying to give this kill over to their carries get it on a big twig get it on the django that was really well played yeah i mean if pate is not there it's uh it's kind of a doozy i mean od was going for that scaling comp finds the opening with that tp very well played with the everfrost street smurf doing the best he can with his fancy feet and now kind of baits his team in i mean it looks like a little bit of a miscommunication on sgr not essentially street smurf's fault they're all just finally tunneling down into the bot side of the map to try and save him but i mean in the end, it, the Drake goes over to OOD in the scaling cop and four kills. 
Exactly, yeah. That, that would definitely seemed like a little bit of a bait. It's almost like Sox was like, we win this. Guys, we win this. Screw it. I'm going in and doing it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could see that just chasing him down with the sonic waves. I mean, Big Twig landing those E's, go finding Warplak actually really aggressively. And I mean, in terms of these items, I mean, this Tristana is so much safer than the Kaisa. I mean, when Kaisa got killed by Big Twig, I mean, it was like a deer in the headlight. She just stopped. I, I really, unfortunately, I feel like Kaisa's not in the best position right now. She received a nerf also on the most recent patch. Admittedly, it was only to the cooldowns on the Akathian Reigns. So it just comes out, it, it's like cooldowns are just, I think. Four seconds longer, but that makes a huge difference in these team fights. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't able to get any early kills either. Like, all the kills from SGR are on Hapate, despite one of them being on Warplak. But in that lane, 2v2 lane, the Tristana pokes her out so hard, she's not able to see us that well. And I mean, Frozen is there to mitigate it, but that's only to mitigate the Antunes engage. Yeah, it just basically shuts him down, keeps him from doing too much. This mid turret has got no help whatsoever. Someone just needs to go up on Sneeze on it. Uh, and that's probably what they're looking to do right here, just trying to get a nice engage. Uh, but Tristana is going to be able to shove this wave out so fast that it doesn't matter that they shoved it in. Yeah, I mean, we can see Kale back on the bot side of the map. Feels a little, Django feels a little bit more comfortable on the bot side. I mean, still shaking in his boots if that tower were to ever go down. But looks like Demon Lord's looking for a gank of some sort. Looking for something. He does have the uh, Rift Herald, I believe, just kind of waiting to use it. Um, so they're looking for a good spot to drop. They probably want to drop it bot side just because the mid turret is so low, or they might go for dropping mid in order to sneeze on the turret, get it to go into tier two. Yeah. I mean, Hapate and Demon Lord have kind of just grouped up, <laughs> placing down that. There we go. Out. Look at the damage coming out from Django onto Demon Lord Nanoi right now. He sees Hapate, so he's actually really afraid to go in too deep. Uh, doesn't quite have the shred yet. We do see Soximus has joined in on this. That's going to be a lot of damage onto the turret, uh, but not a lot else. And we have Django hitting level 11 now. Uh, oh, look at that. In. Getting hit by the face breaker and the haymaker as well. Shield uh, coming out from Django, trying to get himself to stay alive using the Kale ultimate. He's not able to get too much. He is exalted right now, so he does have those wave... Uh, auto attacks, but just isn't in range to actually hit anything at the moment. We do see that Soximus is once again continuing this fight, doing a lot to uh, right there. We see Apate going down before he's actually able to get the damage out from the Haymaker. It's not quite able to finish it off. They're looking now to try and continue this engage, I think, but they're probably just going to end up shoving the Wade as the rest of SGR just backs off. Yeah, I mean, you can see the bot lane from SGR kind of just chasing the bot lane of OOD as they're coming down. A pincer maneuver could have been had, but I mean, that split decision making just wasn't there. And I mean, Hapate ends up paying it for it with his life. Uh, unfortunately. So uh, how do you think this game has been progressing so far based off of our predictions? Oh, dude, it's off the edge. It's off the... <laughs> <laughs> Six feet under. I mean, I don't know where we stand at the moment. The gold is even OOD's kind of farm, like, into this mid slash late game where they want to be. But Hapate is just this raid boss. Look at that hook from Antunes coming out and getting the Yasuo. That is a nice jump over the wall as the rest of OOD jumps on him and Street Smurf just has nowhere to go. Yeah, I mean, Street Smurf just farming the Krogs is unfortunately just hooked in by Antunes, pulling him farther and farther away from victory in this game. And I mean, we were talking about it earlier, if Street Smurf will be the catalyst of this win or loss. And I mean, looking at it right now, he's looking to be on the loss side. Uh, unfortunately so. It does look like that was a situation where... Uh... Antoon saw Street Smurf walking down the street and was like, hey, I'm going to pull you into a back alley. Look at that. Another hook from over the wall from the side. He does manage to get out. That is Frozen trying to get the ult off. Doesn't quite able to, having to have, have gone golden, uh, not able to get a lot of targets. Soximus taking a lot of damage as he got separated. The Akathian Rain coming out, getting the kill for Demon Lord Nanoi. And then we have the rest of OOD having to back off as they're getting chased down by Apate. Yeah, I mean, two members go down from OOD. I, I don't want to discredit that dive. It wasn't bad in the sense of the playmaking call, but what was bad, and you can clearly see the miscommunication between those the members of the team. Some wanted to go for tower. You can see Antunes flashing forward, going for the hook onto Frozen. It lands, but then no one is able to dive and follow up, and due to that, two, two players go down. The Baron's getting started up from SGR. It is going to get started up, and unfortunately, because Soximus was taken down, there's no smite available, and that is going to be a nice binding coming out, catching Django. Uh, that is going to be the showstopper coming out as Django is in his exalted form. That is going to be a lot of... Di Look at this. We've got Kale right now, kind of in that win condition state, but is not quite able to get those auto attacks onto Apate because he's just too tanky. Antu is coming in with the save with the lantern, able to pull him out. They at least stop the Baron, but that is probably going to be them giving up Drake.
Yeah, giving up a Drake, going totaling over to 2-2, two to two, probably unless Soxmas pulls off some cr sort of crazy steal, but a four-man strong on SGR, moving towards that bot side of the map. It looks like they almost kind of want to fight it, though. Uh, we do see Soxmas is probably looking to do some kind of uh, crazy Lee Sin dive play, but I have a feeling it's just not going to work out for him as he just gets completely locked down. There's nowhere for him to go. The Lantern hanging just out of reach as he gets shredded. Yeah, I mean, Frozen with the nice bind just locks him up for an eternity. What feels like it, at least. Django, despite TPing in, doesn't really get much but a mid-farm as a consolation prize. And we can see the map kind of stabilize. And, I mean, this game is going both ways. Yeah, if you're maxing binding, which uh, you either max binding or you max the pool uh, as Morgana. Uh, personally, I go pool because I go for damage, even though it's probably not the smartest move. That binding is probably at a good five or six seconds at this point. Yeah, I mean, he catches anyone, really. I mean, you catch the Lee Sin, you catch the Thresh. I mean, the Thresh are the, is probably going to be one of the targets he's that's going to be picked out the most on end scenes. I'm, yep, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it, once that support is down, there's not much peel from the side of OD. And I mean, at that point, I mean, you just... If you're SGR, you're kind of just running in their face. Yeah, you really are, unfortunately. And so it's... You know, it's funny. It's like we're kind of broken records when we talk about... Uh, uh, grievous wounds and things of that nature how it's like we need to see teams building that I feel like in this game you need to be building QSS's because you've got the Yasuo you've got the Kaiza or the Yasuo and the Morgana and the Demon Lord Nanoi's uh, Diana that all have enough CC to basically pull your champions or displace them and put them into a situation they don't want to be in uh, so I really think that we should be seeing more of that on the side of uh, OOD um, so I'm kind of a little like that's maybe an item diff situation we don't agree with that statement. I feel like QSS at this point of the game, if they're going for a late game scaling comp, I think they need to be able to... Because we, we see SGR aggressing them, and their LOD is kind of fighting back. At this stage in the game, if you're throwing 1,300 gold onto a QSS for only a Morgana bind at this point, I don't think that's a worth in gold. Uh, oh, I mean earlier build rather than right, right now at this point, but I completely agree with you. It's like it's 1,300 gold, a little bit too late. Uh, they are going to start this Baron up. We do have the Lander coming out. They are seeing it. Photograph is here. Soxmas is here as well. well we're not going to see the spicy steal, though, as he chooses not to dive in. Yeah, I mean, you can see <laughs> SGR kind of going for that aggressive play. Even kind of just going for that flip, despite Soxmas being just, I mean, just there. Just He just didn't decide it was too late to take the Sonic Wave, and I wasn't going to land it. Yeah, unfortunately so, and because they were all hanging out by that, they're not able to get any of these waves pushed before the Baron comes into play. So I don't, they probably could have gotten at least a little bit more damage on this mid lane turret had they just let them take the Baron. Yeah, I mean, I think Photograph, I mean, I think OOD and them are in a, a good situation. Kale has now finished her two items, so has Tristana, so has Silas. I mean, they're at a nice stable situation right now, where if they just scale another, like, two Drakes, maybe fight at the at the soul they'll be in a good situation but it depends on how much sgr gets with this baron buff that is very very true and we do see kale up in the top lane very safe right now able to farm those waves and to get those krugs out get themselves some nice gold um they are at that point with like you said with those two items uh that i think we're going to start seeing the kills auto attack speed start to come online in a pretty nasty way epate is really the only one on the side of SGR that has the tank to really withstand a lot of those auto attacks coming out from the Kale. So I think that that's going to be something we got to keep an eye out for. Look at that a, flash, having to flash to keep from getting caught out. It was a good flash at that. I'll give it to Ant Tunes. He's quick with it. Yeah, he is. Got to be. He's quick with the hooks and he's quick with the runaway. Yeah, you can kind of see uh, SGR is kind of their problem with this composition is that they don't have much siege. I mean, as much. <laughs> Their plan of attack for this is have a Pate be a couple levels up and just siege this tower with a, another siege exactly. minion. Exactly. You see, look at that. He dives in on a Big Twig, but that Everfrost comes out rooting him in place to just stop that engage. Yeah, I mean, Big Twig has been really on point with the, the Everfrost tech at this game. That he has. All right, so looking at the the state of this game right now, we got that top wave pushing in. They're all going to probably fight around mid wave here right now. <laughs> Dragon is up in one minute. Uh, so they're probably, if I were OOD, I'd look for a nice pick, try and get something out of this, try and take out one or two members of SGR to make it where they could go for that dragon really easy, because otherwise, with these waves pushed up, it's going to be real easy for SGR to put themselves on soul point. Yeah, at this point in the game, they have SGR does have a top and bottom wave pushing towards OOD, so someone's going to have to go answer that unless they just want the tower damage. Looks like a triple wave is stacking on the top side of the map. That'll be good. You can see maybe move someone up towards that top side. 
Looks like Django's gonna go clear it anyways, and Hippote's gonna go to the other side of the map and push that ball lane in. Mm -hmm. Before that dragon spawns, 20, minutes, 20 seconds. What they're doing with this Baron right now is kind of just doing whatever they can due to the draft difference, where they have all this damage, and we can see these Wombo combos coming through. They have no siege, and you can really it's really reflecting on this Baron power play, where they can always shove waves into the Tower of OD, feeding them gold and experience. Exactly, and look at and uh, we've got Django, like you said, up on that top wave, clearing that wave out, getting some free gold. They have TP, so they are really not in any way uh, worried about a fight breaking out and not being able to respond. Epate's already got this Drake down to about half health. If OOD is smart, they're just going to let it go, and they're just going to keep pushing out their uh, pressure. Do you have Django deciding to not continue the push onto the top turret? Uh, they're just going to go ahead and back while uh, we have... Lee Sin over there just trying to get some extra vision, trying to clear out any of the topside jungle to keep uh, Street De Demon Lord from actually having anything available to him up there. Yeah, I mean, I expect these next couple of fights at the next dragon fight. I expect the next fight to be at this next dragon fight for the soul, the ocean soul. Mm -hmm. Very important for the squad. I mean, it would be three ocean drakes to the side of SGR. And that'll be very hard to come back for, even if you have the level 16 KO and the late game scaling of OOD. But I feel like a lot of these what needs to happen for SGR to win these fights and kind of like bait out OOD is a little bit better wave management. They're kind of just shoving the waves and getting as much experience and gold as they can, which isn't necessarily bad. But for this next dragon, they kind of have to bait OOD out of their shell, even though they will probably end up coming to them and fighting them. It'll be a very rare occasion if OOD decides to give up the Ocean Soul. But I mean, in this in these fights, I wanted to see Hippate and Demon Lord kind of working together. Hippate has a great showstopper for a disposition. He needs to be able to find flanks with his teleport and Demon Lord kind of diving in if they're so engaged. And with that Zonny's Hourglass, there's a lot of stalling and zone control we can take. Yeah, and we are seeing a little bit of that. Just, I agree, we need to see like those two roaming together in order to really uh, coalesce and uh, get their combos together. Big Twig kind of getting caught out a little bit up there in the top side as he's about to get three-manned. We do have Antunes jump, uh, heading in that general direction, able to lantern him to safety if necessary, while the rest of SGR is just kind of hiding out in that top side jungle, waiting for Big Twig to make a mistake and walk in there. Yeah, I mean, Pate's having a heyday right now. He's big set, <laughs> almost on his yeah. fourth, fifth item right now. I mean, level 16, highest level on the server, but Django is catching up quietly. Django is very quietly catching up. Antunes not quite hitting those hooks, though. At the same time, that's probably a good thing because it's not going to be... Look at that damage coming out from Photograph as he just shreds through Epate's health bar. Yeah, I mean, Photograph... I mean, Epate's just kind of face-taking Photograph, saying, I really don't care at this point. But it'll be dangerous once he gets to finish the IE. I, I completely agree. That is going to be a situation. Look, Oh, no, Big Twig getting caught by the Morgana binding, getting to half health almost immediately by the rest of SGR. Uh, that is just nasty. Yeah, I mean, the last couple of minutes have been kind of slow, but it actually has been very calculated from both sides. I mean, OOD wants to scale, get experience, tip gold, and I mean, they're doing the best they can with those waves crashing in, kind of mitigating the gold, and ex the gold that SGR was going to get from that Baron power play by giving over that dragon and not letting them push their weed, as they'd probably lose an inhibitor or two if they were to go fight that last dragon. Exactly. And right now we do see that uh, Django is at level 15. They are one level away from 16, which is when they become exalted permanently, which is a very good position for Kale. We have Soximus once again looking for that dive. They are able to see the Baron, but it's gonna not going to get low enough for him to actually think it's worth. But we have the rest of OOD coming in to join this fight. Uh, this is going to get pretty nasty here in just a moment. Yeah, I mean, everybody's eyes on the Baron. I mean... You can see the Kale opting towards her third item pretty pretty solidly close. I mean, Tristana, I can imagine, is pretty close as well. The Kaisa has been kind of quiet this game. Not being able to dive with any frontliners, really. Hapate and them have always been more plaque, have kind of always been on two different fronts of the fight. And we can see them work together. I feel like once Kaisa gets their third item and she has a little bit of peel, I feel like the damage will be okay onto Photograph. They can delete him, kind of take out a target. But then Django's still left in the picture, and you gotta you gotta wonder what he's gonna do now. It's been ten minutes since you've really been challenged, and Django's finally hit his sixteen mark. And there we go. The Seraphim is on the map as Kill hits level sixteen. They are now permanently exalted. This is the point where you really start to get scared if you're SGR, uh, just because of the amount of damage that she's gonna be able to put out. Big Twig, unfortunately, I feel like he's starting to fall off a little bit. Just the amount of damage that uh, he has. Uh, as Silas, the heal is going to be really important, but that Epate is just being such a monster in that front line. 
Yeah, I mean, what, what you want to do with Big Twig is really just catch and peel. You have your Everfrost, you have your Zhonya's. If you're taking the Morgana ult and use the Zhonya's effectively, you're buying a lot of space and, and forcing out a lot of flashes from the side of SGR just to try and create that zone control. As Not many of the SGR members are very mobile, except for Kaisa, and I mean, Warplak at that is really has to burn his ultimate or flash to get out of there. Oh no, Photograph on the back line, about to get caught by this whole uh, team. We do have a nice pincer right there as Django is able to come in. That was a hook out from Antunes, but he gets caught by a binding, so he's not going to actually be able to jump on from that black shield, preventing the actual displacement. Uh, we've seen Frozen doing very, very well, able to stop a lot of those. Yeah, stopping a lot of those. The Morgana pick was the right play. We've seen it time and time again thwart Antunes and his engages, but Hapate has a teleport on the bot on the on towards the mid side. And we do see that Big Twig has opted for the Diana ultimate. We do have a hook by uh, Antunes able to hit onto uh, a target. They choose not to actually go in on this. Starting up the Drake, that is a good placement by that control word, but it's not going to really do much for them. This Soximus. dragon is getting absolutely shredded. Soximus goes in just a little bit too late. Finally dives in, though. That is a uh, Yasuo ult coming down, getting a lot of damage off. Look at this. Django absolutely shredding this sideline. We have the Frozen Epate. going golden to stay alive. Epate on the back, though, doing work, getting a lot of damage off, able to take down Kale. That is going to be a photograph being the only one alive with Antunes. Uh, sorry, Soximus is alive as well. They just got a little bit separated and weren't quite able to pressure this. That are just going to straight up push this bot side wave, probably get an inhib and an inhibitor turret uh, out of it. Yeah, I mean, Soximus and Photograph left alive. I mean, Antunes has respawned since then. I mean, come... Came over is kind of trying to defend the bot wave. The inhibitor is probably going to down, go down. The, the inhibitor is going to go down. We're going to see the hook coming out from Antunes. Apate is just going to kind of dive in there, though, tanking a turret. It's not going to do a lot of damage, though. We have Photograph face tanking the full Haymaker, getting half health almost instantly. Apate is just healing up so much as they've got that Ocean Soul now. The, I really think Odir is saying Odir to themselves. Yeah, you can see the TP coming down from Big Twig. They want to chase this. They do want to chase this. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work out in their favor, though. Big Twig tanking a Void Seeker from Kaiza. We do have the Sonic Wave coming out. That is oh. a root and a knockback from Demon Lord Nanoi, but Demon Lord Nanoi is going in the wrong direction. Another so uh, Sonic Wave coming out. That is going to be pushed back into his enemy team as Odir are able to pick up that kill. They Right now, we have OOD pushing in as hard as they can on this bot wave, trying to completely negate the uh, pressure that... SGR was able to put out, uh, and unfortunately, Red Buff stops the Void Seeker from hitting him any members of OOD. Yeah, I mean, the initial play, the, and Elder, the Water Soul does end up going to SGR. You can see that. I mean, you can see OOD kind of wanting a Constellation Prize, and the Constellation Prize may be barren at this point. Demon Ward is down for about 20 seconds. He, he is down for 26, and two getting hit by yet another set of damage, having to get the Kale ulti just to stay alive. Street Smurf getting hit by a flash couple forward. of auto attacks from Django, but we have a flash forward from Frozen. Frozen taking a lot of damage, getting the ult out, but it's going to go down before it has a chance to proc. Street Smurf going in on the back line, getting completely shredded by the rest of OOD. They're now going to, like you said, take Baron as consolation. Yeah, I mean, turn a dim situation into a great one. I mean, Antunes gets hooked by that Dark Binding. Everybody steps forward a little bit. The Django's ultimate saving Antunes. Hot is looking for this 1v5, though. He's looking to go in on this. The rest of OOD is just kind of hanging back, seeing this monster of a boss man trying to go in. He's going Django in. actually getting some damage out. The grit is up. That Haymaker is going to deal a lot of damage here momentarily. Showstopper going on Demon the top. Demon to the back line. Demon Lord Nanoi going in onto the back line of OOD. is going to get shredded by Kale, but is going to actually... Django is going to get taken down, pulled back in by the face breaker as he tries to take the Thresh Lantern out and is not able to escape. So now it's going to be SGR taking Baron. Face breaker, hard breaker for him. It was just sucked right back in out of that Lantern. We'll see how that played out in the beginning, though. Yeah, you, you know, the whole thing is like we see them all clustered. They know that Epate is coming in for this fight, right? But they're not going in on it. They're not being aggressive about it. They're letting him dictate the pace of it. And I think that's where they mess it up. Yeah, Big Cook's kind of just sitting in the side. I mean, you guys have Kale and Tershana. You just burned this dragon down. I mean, Softness went for this really play on the bot side of the map. I mean, effectively gets two members on the side. But I mean, Demon Ward just two, like, he just 1v4s. Yeah, he won V4s. The Kale ulti was not available. Oh, that's... I hate to see that. Ooh. As he just thinks he's out, but he gets pulled back in. 
I mean, Hapate truly is living up to the title of Seth's name, the boss. He really is the final boss for OOD, and if they can take him down, I feel OOD has a chance. But I mean, a lot of these last plays have been due to miscommunications and mispositionings. Before in that yeah. Drake, before in that Drake fight, we saw Hapate kind of TP in, and you saw a shift in the positions of both teams, where you saw SGR on the on the purple slash red side of the map, whereas OOD was on the blue side. I'm gonna hold that thought as Antunes. Antu's just gonna get completely shredded as he gets attacked yeah. over the wall and then Void Seekered right in the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just... Maybe I'm, I'm not tilted. entirely sure what he was thinking he could do there. He throws out the hook, but it doesn't even hit Baron. It hits one of the enemy members of, o of SGR. He was uh, he was manifesting Spellbook's spite. Uh, just doing. a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, man, it's just... Oh, that's rough. So rough. Yeah, I mean, Antune's kind of just walking around, just <laughs> just saying hi. It took a little bit too more, a bit more damage than he could chew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that Kaiza passive proc. That void corruption is just no joke, as it actually ends up hitting you with that fifth stack. Uh, at this point in time, I think that SGR is just so far ahead. They've been able to take out one of the Nexus turrets just from the minion wave pushing by itself. Uh, at that point, OOD's got nothing they're able to do to really respond. We've got Elder Drake coming up here in about two minutes. But other than that, there's really no major objectives on the map for OOD to pick up that can really help them besides farm. Yeah, I mean, if either of these teams end up getting the Elder Soul, I mean, it will be an even fight. Well, if... <laughs> Not an even fight, but I mean, you know, one-sided fight. That's what I meant to say. I mean, It'll be a see... very one-sided fight, yeah. Yes. I mean, if Django has that Elder Soul and he's getting auto-attacks down, it's going. he's going to be a straight monster. If Demon Lord and Hapate get on that back line, just chucking out autos, the Demon Lord... You saw what he did in that last fight, 1v4. That ultimate absolutely destroyed Big Twig and friends. It... Yeah, it was it was absolutely gross. Look at this poor Soxum is getting caught by the stride breaker, getting caught by uh, the pullback from the face breaker. Then we also have the ult from Soxum coming down on top of Soxum keeping him down. Epate is taking a lot of damage. Showstopper on Silas as well to take him out. That is going to be the a shutdown. Taken down. The shutdown is gone, so that's a lot of gold going on to Thresh, unfortunately, rather than one of the carries. And then that's going to be two turrets though for it because they're not able to respond to this uh, this push. Yeah, I mean, they've committed five members down to kill Hapate, which isn't necessarily bad, but they still have the Baron buff, and they already prepped a wave on the top side of the map. Bring three, three members over, kind of get that top turret down. Now your inhibitor's exposed. Yeah, inhibitor exposed on the top side. The inhibitor turret is basically only a third of their health, quarter of its health, and it's already got a Baron buff that's just going to shred it even more, so that's basically gone as well. Uh, Right now, OOD's in a very bad spot. They really need to win a good team fight, but unfortunately, they've got to position their waves to be pushing at the same time, and I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do that before the game is over. Yeah, I mean, we've hit this state of the game where Tristana isn't necessarily doing as much because she can't get any space. The, all the eggs are in one basket, and that's Django. Soxmas has reached the mid, the late game, and I mean, he, he's really only good for shields and hops. And Look at that, we've tagged. got Soxmas getting caught by a binding and getting absolutely shredded. There is nothing oh. he can do before it goes away. He can't even Apate. grab the lantern. Epate going behind the wall, getting the showstopper on Antunes, pulling him over the wall, and he gets binded right in place right there as well. Demon Lord Nanoi diving in on the back line. Yasuo getting the nice knockup, getting a huge ultimate off as he just shreds through the rest of OOD, and that is going to be game one going over to o SGR. Oh, man. Photograph. Oh, that nasty, that nasty ace. He tried to fight it, but there was just no way he could get around it. Yeah, I mean, picture perfect for the side of SGR. Taking OD in <laughs> somewhat of a convincing fashion. It was slow paced and the game did go long, but I mean, they played to their win condition. After that kind of disastrous little early game, where they kind of just played through Pate, weren't able to find very good macro play, but played the, the Ocean Soul win condition. I mean, it worked out for them. It worked out fantastically for them, and unfortunately, uh, I think that it was also due to fantastic positioning on the side of SGR versus OOD. Uh, they were able to catch out Django before he was able to get a good position with the scale to get the free auto attacks off. Same thing with Photograph during a lot of those fights. You just had uh, Epate being the absolute beast of a boss that he was, able to dive into that backline without even really having to worry about most of the damage he was taking. And there were just some absolutely crucial bindings by Frozen. Yeah, Frozen really <laughs> mitigating a lot of these engages coming out from the side of OOD. You can see the 
the dark shield coming out, preventing Antunes from getting any potential engaged, and then the dark binding is catching multiple members out. I mean, that last fight ended with Soximus kind of getting caught by that dark binding, kind of created that whole play. And not to mention, I don't know if anyone saw it, but he placed a control ward down so he couldn't even take the lantern after the binding was up. Exactly. And it's uh, that's just something you, you hate to see. Uh, we're going to take a quick intermission, though, and then we'll be right back with game number two of SGR versus OOD.
someone makes you an exception. 